Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to hopefully resolve Windows crash dumps on your computer. So if you're getting different blue screen errors, this tutorial should hopefully be able to resolve your problem. So the first thing you're going to need to do is have a Windows 7 ISO already burned to a CD or DVD. Microsoft has made it very easy to do that online if you are unsure how to do it. I have a link in the description of the video of how to get to the point of having a DVD or a removable flash drive that's bootable on your computer. So I would recommend that you check that out if you're unsure. It's very easy to do, you just have to have a product key and it usually will be one on the back of your laptop or tablet or whatever device you're using that has Windows installed on it. So once you're at that point, we basically want to get to the boot menu. It's going to be different depending on your computer's manufacturer. Some people will be the escape key or F2 keys, those seem to be the more common ones. And you just basically want to boot your computer from the CD-ROM drive, or at least in my case it's CD-ROM, but if you guys have a removable USB stick, you might be able to boot off of that as well. You can also go into the BIOS settings and change the boot order to boot from the CD-ROM as well, and then just change it back when you're done following this step. Basically, the BIOS runs outside of the Windows environment for the most part, so you don't really necessarily have to get into Windows in order to get into the BIOS. So from the boot menu, I'm going to select my CD-ROM drive because that's where my Windows 7 disk is currently located. Okay, so I'm going to press a key to boot from my DVD here. I should begin loading the files. Okay, from this utility, you want to left click on next once you've confirmed this information. Now, we're not actually going to be installing Windows, which you can do if you wanted to start fresh. So that's always a last resort if you needed to reinstall the operating system, which would be a very high likelihood it would fix your problem. We're going to left click on repair your computer instead down here. From this list, it should tell you where your operating system is located, so hopefully it will be able to identify your Windows computer. And then you want to left click on Next. Now we have quite a few recovery tools at our disposal at this point. I would first recommend left clicking on the Startup Repair option, which should hopefully automatically fix problems that are preventing Windows from starting. So I'd recommend selecting that option to be your first check. Okay, so it might say that our Prepare could not detect a problem. I'm going to just click on Cancel here. And now I'm going to go to the System Restore option, so I'd recommend selecting that. Click on Next. If you have any restore points saved on your computer, I recommend left clicking on Next here and then restoring your computer back to an earlier time. Hopefully that method has a good amount of success as well. I noticed from the past using the System Restore utility does yield a good results a good amount of the time. I'd recommend that being your second option here. And keep in mind, it shouldn't really mess with any of your documents saved. It might just remove a couple programs if you recently installed them. So I'm going to cancel out of that one, even though I would recommend going down the list here pretty much. System image recovery, that's a little bit different. If you don't have a recovery media, like a CD or DVD backed up, it's probably not going to apply to most people. The next option would be the Windows Memory Diagnostic. So if you suspected you had an issue with your RAM sticks or something along those lines, you could run a memory test to see how they are performing. And the last option would be to run some command prompt commands, which I'm actually going to show in this tutorial. But hopefully you guys should try the first couple methods here, the start repair and the system restore. 
I noticed that probably these two, I would say, work for a good number, at least the majority of people that are probably experiencing this issue. So we're going to move on to the command prompt here. And there's quite a few different things we can try in order to resolve this issue. So I just want everybody to keep an open mind on this. So at this point, I would recommend typing in check disk. So chkdsk space, and now whatever drive letter Windows is installed on. Most people, it should be the C drive, but it could also be the D drive or anything through the letter Z. But we're going to say C for this tutorial. If you guys know what your drive letter is, instead put it in there. But most people should be the C drive. So then you want to do a little colon immediately after that with no spaces. It should be one dot on top of another dot. Then you want to do another space. Once you have it like that, you want to do a forward slash and then an R. Notice there's no space in between the forward slash and the R. So again, check this, CHK, DSK, space, C, colon, another space, forward slash, lowercase r. Then we're going to hit enter on our keyboard. This will begin running a check disk scan, so depending on how big your hard drive is, this will take some time. It is moving pretty good, so I'm just going to let it go on the screen here, just so you guys get a good idea of how long it should take in your case.
Okay, everybody, so we can see that it has finished once you have that blinking cursor at the end. We can see the total of this size, how much was found by bad sectors, and pretty much didn't find anything in the bad sector area. So it didn't create a log file for it, but that shouldn't really matter to most people. So at this point, I would recommend typing an exit here, so EXIT, then just hit enter. And I would recommend you restart your computer. Hopefully, you should be able to boot into the Windows 7 operating system successfully at this point. You can see that we're already loading Windows at this time. So hopefully this should be able to address most of your guys' issues that you came into this tutorial with. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I do hope I was able to help you out, and I look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.